In this Excel video, I will show you how to build Excel pivot tables from scratch. This is going to be fun. Let's get started. Here I am in Excel with some sales data, and this is a fairly complex spreadsheet. And there's wonderful information here. The problem is, in Excel, if you have a complicated spreadsheet, it can be hard to extract useful information from all of that data. Fortunately, we have pivot tables. Now, I recommend that before you insert a pivot table, you turn the data into a table. So I'm going to click just anywhere in my data. How about here on C6? I'll hold Control and then tap T for table. Excel is double checking where's the data for your table, but I know that it's picked the right range. It's picked A1 through G61, and that is correct. It's important that if your table has headers, like in my case, date, range, salesperson, etc., that you have this checked. And by default, mine was already checked. I'm going to click OK, and my range of data has been converted into a table. It's automatically been given a table style. Now, if you like the table style that it comes with, great. If not, feel free to change it up. You can pick different colors if you want to. You can also, if you so choose, go here on this newly added table design tab and ribbon. This was added as soon as I turned my data into a table. That's when this appeared. So I can use this table design tab and ribbon to do some things. Like I said, I could change the color scheme if I want to. I could also click here to add like a total row. I'm not going to do that. I could add banded columns or take off banded columns or banded rows in this case. So just some different things that you can try if you want to. Now that my data is a table, I'm going to actually rename the table. By default, it was named table one. I'm just going to rename this sales data, tap enter. And so now this table of data has been officially named sales data. Okay, we're ready now to insert the pivot table. And pivot tables really are the best tool in Excel for helping you to analyze data. The reason they call it a pivot table is because you can easily pivot from one type of report in your table to another type of report. So let's see how that works. Making sure that I've selected a cell that's inside my table, I'm going to go to the Insert tab and choose Pivot Table. Now you'll notice the button has two parts. I'm going to click on the bottom bottom part of the pivot table button because that will give me some options and some of these are very interesting. But for today, the one that I want to select is from table or range. So I'll click there and I get a pop-up. And you can see in the pop-up, it's showing the table or range in question. And because I named this table in advance, the name of it's right there, sales data. Next, I need to decide where is the pivot table that corresponds to this table of data? Where is it gonna go? In a new worksheet? Or spreadsheet or in an existing worksheet or spreadsheet. If it's an existing one, you'll have to choose it. And we have another option down here as well. In my case, I'm going to add it to a new worksheet. I click OK and you'll notice down here in the lower left corner, a second sheet has been created called Sheet 2. I'm going to click on that and drag it to be behind or after Sheet 1. Now, so far, this is just kind of confusing. There's no real data here that I can see. It is giving me a little help, though. It's saying to build the report, choose some fields from the pivot table field list here at the right. So let's do that. You'll notice here at the right in the pivot table field, Excel has added each of my column headings. Product, unit sold, unit price. Those are all listed here at the right. And so what's going on here is Excel is letting me use this pivot table to focus in on just the data that I care about most at this moment. Instead of looking at all of the data in this table or this spreadsheet, using the pivot table, I can focus in on the key information that I need right now. So let's say I'm most interested in the region, maybe the product, and the total sale. So I've checked those boxes, and look what's happened. Excel has used my selections, my choices here, to create a report. And it's showing just this information I highlighted. Now what happened as I was checking these boxes is Excel decided where to put those down here in this area of the pivot table fields panel. And notice you can drag fields 
between areas below. So it automatically thought region and product should go here in rows. So that's why we have region, east, north, south, and we have products, keyboards, monitors, mouse, printer, webcam. Those are all in rows. Well, what are in columns? Nothing really so far, but we also do have values, sum of total sale. Now, we could change this up. Let's say I want the region to be one of the columns. I could click on region and drag it here and drop it in columns. And now you can see what happened. So now in the rows, I have the products. In the columns, I have the regions, east, north, south, west. So those are broken out differently now because I dragged region up here to columns. It's still tracking the sum of total sales. I'm going to put that back for now. One other thing you should be aware of when it comes to the fields that you have in these different areas, it matters which one is on top. So as it is right now, region is on top. So I can focus in on the east region and see how the sales of keyboards and monitors have gone. But if I switch those two and drop region below product, now it's going to show each product, let's say keyboard, and each region and how the keyboard board has been selling in each of those regions. It looks like it's struggling in the east region. Now watch this. What if I want to add another field to my report? I can go here and let's say add salesperson. By checking that box, salesperson has been added. But you know what? I would really like the salesperson to actually be a column. So I'm going to click here on column. So now I have product and region as rows. And then columns are the different salespeople. That's an interesting way to organize the report, but there's another area here I haven't used yet, and that's filters. I'm going to move salesperson over to filters and look at what happens. Now that I've got salesperson in the filters area, I can go up here to the top of my report and I can change the salesperson. Right now, this data is showing all of the team's sales as a total. But if I click here on all or on this drop down arrow button, I can change it from all to just Bob. Click OK. So these are the sales results just for Bob. You can see Bob has sold laptops in the north and west regions, but not the south or east. And you can see the total number of sales generated. What about Ethan? I can switch to Ethan and the numbers all change. So this is a very powerful option, I think, deciding which of these fields will be used as a filter. And to me, salesperson makes a lot of sense in this case. For now, I'm going to click on the filter button and switch it back to all and click OK. Now let's look for a minute here in the values area. Area. Right now, it says sum of total sale. That's what's being displayed here. Well, what if I don't want that to be the case? I can click here on sum of total sale and I could choose value field settings and I could change it from sum to average or max or min, whatever I want. I'll click OK. Those numbers changed because now they're showing averages. I'm going to hold Control and tap Z to go back to showing the sum of total sale. So this is one of the reasons why it's called a pivot table. I can quickly pivot from showing the data in a report that's formatted one way to changing it to be displayed in another way or yet another way. And I can add more and more information or if I choose, I can remove information to focus in on a smaller piece of data and produce maybe a simpler report. Now it's important to notice that because I have inserted a pivot table, I actually now have two additional tabs that produce different ribbons for me across the top of Excel. There's the pivot table analyze tab and the design tab, but these are specific to pivot tables. Let's look at design. With the design tab selected, I can change up the look and feel of the pivot table just by changing the color scheme. I can also put back banded rows if I want to, banded columns, and I could make some changes as to how subtotals show up and also grand totals. So I'm going to start with subtotals. If I click there, I can say do not show subtotals and it takes that information out of the pivot table report. I could show all subtotals at bottom of group. So now the subtotal appears here, or I could have it show at the top of the group. So those are some nice options for how the data is displayed in your reports. We also have grand totals. Turn it off for rows and columns. So now it's gone. 
on for rows and columns, it reappears, or you could say only columns or only rows. There are some options here for the report layout. I could show it in compact form, or I could show it in outline form, or in tabular form. We can also repeat all item labels, so that'll just add east and north and south and west all the way down. And we can also not repeat those. So these report layout options just, again, change how the data is displayed in the pivot table report. Finally, we can add blank rows, like a blank line after each item. It just spreads out the data a bit, or I can remove that. Now I can also go to the pivot table analyze tab to make some other changes. For example, the pivot table is named automatically for me, but I can change this and call it sales data 2024, tap enter. I could also select a field and go here to the field settings, and then I could choose basically a number format. To add a number format or change a number format, you would just click here on the number format button, and this should look familiar to you if you have used the number format options in Excel. I'm going to choose currency or actually accounting might be better in this case. I'll click OK, click OK again, and dollar signs are added to that range of data. Now I could have gone into field settings, number formats, and also adjusted the number of decimal places. If the cents don't matter, but just the dollars, for example, I could lower this to zero, click OK, click OK again, and now it's not showing the decimal places. There are other ways to add that number formatting. I guess you could go to the home tab and change the number formatting that way, but I would say you need to be careful with that with pivot tables. Pivot tables work a little differently, and so it's better to to change the number formatting the way I showed by using the Pivot Table Analyze tab. The other way you could do it is right click on a cell that's in the field that you want to change and then choose Value Field Settings. It takes you to the same place I showed earlier, Number Format, and change the number format. So in this video, I have shown you how to build Excel pivot tables from scratch. If you want to learn more about pivot tables, I have three other pivot table videos at this point. One of them shows you how to use Excel recommended pivot tables, which are really exciting and in some ways easier, but may not give you exactly the data you're looking for. But that would be a good video to watch next. And I have two other really good pivot table videos as well. If you want to learn more about pivot tables, leave me a comment below this video and I'll consider making even more Excel pivot table videos. For now though, I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. But you could also click the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. Speaking of supporting the channel, I want to say thank you to my super techie channel supporters. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.